we will start the next uh, session is about uh, how can we uh, develop the new uh, VAIs to prove. Then I think a finally, final goal will be the uh, that can be developed by uh, for a radio pharmaceutical. So actually, uh, almost 20 years ago, I firstly uh, reached uh, Seoul National University Hospital. At that time, we have uh, only uh, we have a uh, three round bottom flask and one starter. Uh, machine and one, one magnetic bar and one chemical pool. Uh, I, I just uh, finished a master course of uh, organic chemistry, then I joined the, our chemistry team. And then uh, that time that uh, only that much uh, uh, things we have. And then uh, that time I, I uh, 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 synthesized um, uh, myocardial imaging agent for technician labeling, technician 99M labeling. Then uh, uh, after two years, we uh, could publish first uh, 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 related paper. So I think that even though we don't have any uh, 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 device or machine, then we can try to uh, develop the new radio pharmaceutical. So, if you don't, if you your situation is not good now, but I think if you have a, uh, if if you eager to or. or, or uh, make a new radio pharmaceutical, then you can start. So how can we design the new uh, radio pharmaceuticals? Just uh, simply you can start, uh, uh, you have to find the target, proper target. Then uh, for that target, you can make a new uh, uh, proof design and then you can uh, have a synthesis. Um, I think if you don't have uh, any uh, chemistry colleague, then you can ask to make uh, uh, that compound with the, uh, the your uh, uh, university or uh, or near nearby the institute, the, the chem chemistry institute. That you can ask to uh, make uh, that compound. Or another choice will be the you can uh, order to make to a uh, uh, company, small company, they can uh, make a, uh, just a small amount of chemical. Uh, and I think earlier we purchased uh, uh, RGD compound. That time we purchased one gram for $10,000. So so that is very expensive. So, but I think if you, nowadays that is a half a price, but if you want to make a new uh, compound, then that is the, uh, uh, and, and I think you can get a patent for that compound. Then I think you can ask to that uh, compound, production of that compound to the, uh, another company is is uh, just a start point, and after that you can make a, a, a radio labeling. Then you should choose the proper radio isotope for uh, diagnostic purpose or therapeutic purpose, and or both purpose. And after the radio labeling, you can do the in vitro experiment in your lab. And after that, we can do the animal experiment with uh, in vivo imaging or uh, ex vivo uh, uh, biodistribution. And after that, uh, you can pass through the uh, uh, non-GLP non uh, toxicity study and then uh, stepwise uh, GLP toxicity study. Then you can uh, uh, make a 
uh, clinical, you can make a, a investigational root drop application for clinical trial. Then uh, uh, after the clinical phase one, two, three, and then you can get the uh, new drug application for uh, KFDA or FDA. And then finally, you got the approval and the commercialization. So uh, which target? So I think uh, uh, if you have a, a, have a, a colleague with the, uh, for a brain receptor uh, researcher, then you can ask to uh, you can ask them uh, which target which uh, uh, brain receptor will be the best for for next decade. So and also. That is the same with the cancer uh, 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 area. So uh, first one is the applicability and also future is very important to uh, uh, cho choose the target. And also uh, for a brain imaging agent, uh, we should focus on uh, F18 because of that uh, positron range is uh, proper uh, uh, than the C11. So, in case of brain uh, receptor imaging agent, you, you should choose the F18 as a, a radioisotope. But for a cancer treatment, you should choose the beta minus or alpha particle for radiation therapy. And also, one more thing you have to consider that the half life of the uh, uh, each radionuclide. So uh, some kinds of uh, biological system that needs more time. So earlier report that uh, F18 FDG, after the injection of FDG, uh, F18 FDG, then uh, more than six hours after the injection, they showed a somewhat different uh, images than uh, than the uh, one hour after image after one hour image. So biological system sometimes needs more time. So uh, that's why we we need uh, more uh, 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 longer half life uh, radionuclide. So then then proper uh, radionuclide you, you choose. Then we have to consider the. Uh, chemistry of the uh, of the that molecule, so uh, feasibility and also molecular weight, lipophilicity or charge will be will affect the biodistribution of that uh, new radio pharmaceutical. First of all, we have to consider the molecule sizes. As you can see here, for a small molecule, we if you want to make a brain imaging agent. Uh, that should be less than uh, uh, 1,000 uh, uh, Dalton uh, should be uh, uh, reasonable. Uh, but uh, in case of uh, antibody, they, they project at uh, more than uh, 10 nanometer size. So it will uh, circulate in the blood pool and finally they captured it for liver. So you have to consider the molecule size because of that one also uh, a factor for uh, 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 biodistribution. And charge uh, also important uh, factor for biodistribution. In case of neutral charge uh, 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 molecule, they, they can uh, have a higher lipophilicity than the uh, charged uh, 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 compound. Uh, as you can see here, positively charged and negatively charged uh, compound. Uh, uh, normally, uh, positively charged uh, compound can uh, 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 uptake by the myocardial, uh, uh, so uh, that can be used for a myocardial imaging agent. And normally, uh, negative charged 
compound can easily pass through the kidney excretion. So, uh, uh, as you know that the uh, technician MAC3 or DTPA possess the negatively charged one and also uh, technician MIBI possess the positively charged uh, compound. And that is the, uh, on the same concept, hydrophilicity or hydrophobicity is very important for uh, 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 specific uh, uh, purpose of the radiopharmaceutical. So, uh, hydrophilic compound can pass through the uh, kidney. So, we can use hydrophilic compound as a kidney imaging agent. Hydrophobic compound uh, can pass through the uh, blood brain barrier. So, if you want to, uh, you, you, uh, if you want to uh, make a new uh, brain imaging agent that should be hydrophobic. But uh, uh, that hydrophobicity that is related to the log P, uh, above log P number uh, is above two, that can uh, normally uh, uh, uptake to the uh, uh, hepatocyte because of the that uh, radiopharmaceutical uh, can bind to the albumin or other protein, then uh, they can be degraded in the liver. So hydrophobicity, you, you have to find the uh, proper hydrophobicity for uh, that brain imaging agent. And any kinds of uh, synthesis method you can do. So I think of basically organic synthesis will be the uh, best for or best choice for uh, uh, a small molecule or integrating synthesis. If you uh, want to make uh, some portion of the uh, complex formation, then you have to consider the inorganic, inorganic uh, synthesis. Uh, sometimes uh, purification from the natural product or uh, biochemical or biological synthesis method you can choose. And after that, uh, radio labeling of the proper label, radio labeling uh, procedure we have to uh, consider. So here you can see the several diagnostic or therapeutic radio isotope and uh, adequate uh, radio chemistry will be the for uh, F18 or C11 or technician or random and other methods. And after making the radio pharmaceutical, you have to do the purification system. Normally, uh, in case of hydrophobic compound, you can do the C18 cartridge method or uh, hydrophilic or uh, 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 charged particle, uh, charged compound, you can do the uh, ion exchange column chromatography. And after the purification, sometimes you can use the HPLC for, uh, for uh, uh, separation of the uh, uh, original uh, 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 radio isoprobe and other byproduct. And after the making uh, radio labeling, we, can, we have to do the quality control process uh, that uh, can we, we can show the radio labeling efficiency or radio chemical purity. Sometimes you can get the specific activity for, especially for a brain receptor imaging agent. And also pH is very important for, for, for uh, injection because of, uh, uh, we recommend that the pH range should be four to eight will be uh, good for patient. And also chemical purity is important for uh, uh, that uh, vial contains the uh, other chemicals. Uh, uh, here you can see the three different methods of uh, radio labeling, chemistry of radio labeling. In case of F18 and C11, they use the SN2 reaction and uh, nucleophilic reaction, and also another metallic uh, uh, radionuclide, they, uh, the, they can do the uh, uh, coordination chemistry. Uh, but 
in case of iodine, uh, they used uh, electrophilic substitution reaction. So only three uh, different mechanism of radio labeling. So uh, I think uh, in case of coordination chemistry, simply you can mix with the chelating agent with uh, this metal is enough. So uh, uh, simply uh, purchase from the uh, company, you can make a, 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 a complex formation reaction with the uh, uh, radionuclide. And next, so we have to do the in vitro experiment study. First of all, we have to do the uh, stability study. So uh, we, we normally we do the uh, two different uh, uh, condition. One is the uh, aqueous solution, and the other one is the uh, that radio pharmaceutical kept in the uh, uh, serum, human serum, and then we uh, 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 at the, uh, uh, 37 degree uh, Celsius. And these two data, then we can expect that uh, that is injected into the uh, 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 human or animal, then we can expect that uh, that is uh, stable or not. And sometimes we need check the uh, charge determination with the electrophoresis or ion exchange column. And as I mentioned that the uh, log P value can uh, 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 show the uh, hydrophobicity or hydrophilicity. So we can do the octanal distribution experiment. And then uh, finally we can check the binding uh, affinity of the uh, 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 some um, protein or cells, then, then we can uh, get the uh, uh, KD or KI value, then we uh, uh, confirm that the, that compound has a affinity to our target. And uh, sometimes uh, in vivo metabolism study, we can do the serum stability or uh, sometimes we can do the liver, we can get the liver tissue or brain tissue, then uh, grounded, grounded together with uh, uh, that radio isotop, radio pharmaceutical, then uh, we can check the uh, uh, radio TLC or HPLC for uh, meta, uh, there is a metabolism or not. And then we can do the animal experiment. Biodistribution is a, a typical example of the uh, ex vivo uh, study. So after injection of the radio or pharmaceutical, then we can exit uh, uh, the, we can get the, uh, each organs and then we can put the, that organs into the gamma counter, then uh, we can calculate the, uh, each organ that percentage I uh, injection dose per gram. Then we can make a kinds of table or a graph of the uh, uh, biodistribution data. And from biodistribution or imaging data, we can do the pharmacokinetics of the uh, that radio pharmaceutical and pharmacodynamics. And sometimes you can use uh, autoradiography for uh, uh, biodistribution of the that specific radio pharmaceutical. And finally, uh, animal pet or spat or some kinds of animal uh, imaging uh, machine, we can get the image. From that image or the biodistribution study, we can calculate the binding potential for each target. And also we can confirm the efficacy test with the animal model such as a tumor model or disease model. And then uh, we can do the, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that compound is going into the uh, uh, specific target of the, that animal model or uh, therapeutic efficacy you can uh, uh, measure. And also you have to check the in vivo metabolism and then uh, preclinical pre tests that should be done before the IND uh, uh, application. So I think uh, that uh, area will be covered by the uh, uh, means of salt. And as I mentioned that after 
10 years, year of 2008, we have uh, some dedicated uh, lab for uh, uh, radiochemistry. So we have a lab bench here and also we, uh, we have uh, NMR and mass spectrometry and also HPLC. And uh, this cyclotron is the research cyclotron. So uh, we can use that for our research purpose and also chemical food here. And uh, we have animal pet and animal fat. And also we have a, a, a kinds of uh, radio synthesis module. So uh, I don't know the exact situation of uh, Bangladesh, but uh, I think you may have a lab bench, also cyclotron. Uh, I think within this year, that is installed or not, I, I, I don't know the exact situation, but you purchased already. So I think just as simply you can start and then, uh, uh, then that will be the uh, good result. Okay, this is the end of my presentation. If you have any question, and after uh, 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 Dr. Sir's presentation, then we can discuss several things. Thank you. Hey, hello everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, share our uh, experience of what kind of, uh, actually what kind of obstacles we have met to the, this clinical trial in Korea. So we have now started this first uh, in Korea PRRT therapy clinical trial. And uh, as I have mentioned that there is also an uh, increasing number of neuroendocrine tumor patients in Korea. However, still the number, the total number is estimated to be uh, near 2,500 patients. So it is actually defined as a rare disease in Korea. And the actual definition is uh, disease which has a less than 220,000 and also whether the diagnosis is difficult, we define it as a rare disease and these neuroendocrine tumors are actually rare in Korea. So there is no actual registry system in Korea right now. And there, as I previously mentioned, there are new drugs that are available for this therapy and FDA has approved this uh, Lutathera in 2018. However, in Korea, as you can see, although we have a, a large volume of nuclear medicine studies for diagnostic uh, uh, exams, we do a lot of volumes. However, and we also have a international trainees from all other countries also from Bangladesh. And however, our patients, Korean patients, had no option in Korea to get therapy. So they went to other countries like China, Malaysia, Australia, and also into Europe to get the radio, radionuclide therapies. So, so then, did we had not did we do nothing until now we actually tried we started to try to apply this uh, do this prt back in 2010 so there has been a project to uh, do the clinical application of this prt uh, how so we have done a preclinical studies and toxicity test uh, However, uh, at 2014, where, when we joined the PICS, 
uh, there has been a new radio uh, GMP standard also had to uh, meet to radio pharmaceutical. So we need a new uh, GMP facility for this uh, production of radio therapeutic radio pharmaceutical. So this project actually stopped, halted in 2015. And, but there, is, there, as you have shown, as you have seen, there is an increasing number of patients in Korea and there is a demand for the treatment. So actually, a company came out to, as a uh, support this uh, new trial. And so we finally have a with the uh, consultation with the Korean FDA, we finally have gotten the approval of the clinic, phase one clinical trial in Korea in 2020. And now we have, for now, we have treated uh, four patients, uh, and four patients, and total uh, cycle, six cycle of uh, mutation dota tape was treated in Korea. And other with the, uh, not. so for the clinical trial, uh, I would like to discuss about the process from the clinical testing to this uh, dose finding phase one clinical trial. What kind of things we, what kind of hurdles we had to uh, pass through. So. So for the preparation of these approval, IND approval, there should be uh, many kind of uh, data that is recommended from the Korean FDA right now, such as a pharmacokinetic, like expiratory studies with uh, preclinical studies. And so these are actually uh, studies regarding efficacy and also studies regarding toxicity safety issues is also important. And these safety uh, toxicity tests should be done in the GLP facilities. And not only these kind of preclinical data, but also what is important, more, maybe more important is the content of the preparation of characterized characteristics of the product. And it includes the uh, information of drug substance, drug products. And also there needs to be about the stability of this uh, drug. But uh, actually these, are, uh, these uh, characteristics are, have been defined by a uh, previous uh, professor in Sang Lee's lecture and the pharma our companies have prepared mostly and what we have to actually take care of more is about this toxicity and efficacy of the drug and as you can see uh, from this uh, although it is in some Korean and this A B C D E F represents A E represents single dose and repeat dose C reproductive toxicity so for other new drugs, these all kinds of uh, toxicity tests are actually required for the IND approval. However, for the radiopharmaceuticals, uh, radio therapeutic radiopharmaceutical or just radiopharmaceutical, there is some, uh, uh, some point that they don't need, actually they don't need this kind of uh, other reproductive toxicity or cardiogenicity. So, and since this is actually, uh, this toxicity actually regards for a chemical toxicity of the cold pharma, uh, the ligand itself actually. So, but because we use very uh, small amount of uh, these uh, ligands, so the chemical toxicity, we can actually, uh, it actually doesn't have that much effect. So that kind of uh, characteristics of these radiopharmaceutical, because of these characteristics, uh, usually in FDA or Korean FDA also do not actually request other toxicity data, but we have to provide them the single dose studies 
for them. But uh, but but what have what also need to be provided to the uh, for the approval of IND is that the toxicity from radiation induced toxicity should be actually evaluated. However, these kind of radiation toxicity cannot be actually evaluated in the same way as the uh, pharmaceutical ligands because we know what uh, these radiation will, what kind of uh, uh, effect this radiation will have to the animal or so we already know and we can actually uh, speculate from the biodistribution and dosimetry study. So for, so what Korean FDA actually requests is some single dose study of this cold pharmaceutical cold ligand and uh, tox the radiation toxicity, which can be uh, evaluated by the biodistribution. So we provide them the biodistribution and dosimetry data. So actually, Lutathera also gone, uh, have provided this biodistribution data for their FDA approval. And, but there is some concern for this, uh, when we have to provide the biodistribution, there is some concern that lutetium, as I previously have mentioned, that lutetium can be imaged by the scan. So we can actually easily acquire a distribution data. But when we, when we do a alpha particle, there is a, uh, problem because there is no cold form of that ARPA particle. So we cannot actually get a uh, biodistribution data regarding this ARPA particle. So there should be some consideration how we will deal with this cold uh, uh, ARPA uh, particles. So a kind of surrogate marker might be uh, enough to reflect the distribution of the alpha particle should be considered. But actually, there are uh, still in Korea, there is not that much consensus right now about the how to deal with these uh, alpha particles. And for the bio, for the ligand in this toxicity, uh, as I have previously mentioned, uh, these, uh, we need a cold form and we use a cold form like lutetium-175 and because lutetium-175 doesn't have a radiation, we can use it as, and it, all, it has the same chemical composition. It, we expect that it will have same uh, it can be used as it to evaluate the ligand induced toxicity. But also this cold compound pharmaceutical has a problem for alpha particle too because these alpha particles don't have a cold, uh, some alpha particles don't have such a cold uh, pharmaceutical to substitute. So there, you, there is some concerns. And as you can see, Lutacera actually used for their ligand induced toxicity, they used this uh, Lutetium-175 labeled uh, drug to evaluate the ligand induced toxicities. And there also is some concerns about a, a long-term toxicity about when, and these kind of late radiation toxicity should be the, the information of these late radiation toxicity should be provided when patients have a long life expectancy and that could be affected by late radiation adverse effect. So neuroendocrine tumor, actually patients have quite a long life expectancy. So oh, we, uh, Korean FDA also requested to uh, provide this late radiation toxicity, then how should we, uh, what kind of dose we should use? 
And there is some uh, guideline that we can use just a double dose. The highest selected dose for radiation toxicity should be at least twice the maximum planned human dose of radiation tolerance for the critical organ. So lutetium lutatera actually used this uh, plan to using a uh, 15 milli uh, tree of single dose and 7.5 of double dose to confirm the radi late radiation toxicities. So again, these are some requested uh, for the Korean FDA and so for the consideration for these kind of uh, regulations, we always have to uh, uh, have to talk and we have to participate in the making up this regulation and then we can have a breakthrough. So I, I had previously heard that there are not right now not uh, such strict regulation right now, but uh, when when the time goes, I think uh, the consensus is that there should be a this kind of strict uh, regulation to for the safety of the patient who are actually patient for the clinical trials. So, but when we make this regulation, we have to actively actually participate. And so we have started uh, uh, ready this uh, PRRT. So I would like to actually uh, share the first in Korea, uh, some uh, data from our uh, clinical trial of this lutetium dotatate. So the first patient which we have enrolled was a 53 year old male patient who had a rectal cancer and which come out to be a neuroendocrine tumor grade two. And this patient had a rectal neuroendocrine tumor with uh, liver, lymph node, and bone metastasis as you can see in this CT image. And this patient gone on for this uh, somatostatin analog treatment. However, there was no effect for this treatment. And as you can see, the lesions have grown and there, has, uh, there are some new lesions in the liver. So this uh, patient was uh, proper for the inclusion criteria of our clinical trial. So we included this patient and we take the gallium dotato PET to find out whether this patient will respond to the therapy. And as you can see, there this patient had the lesions had high gallium dotato uptake. So we expect that this patient will have a uh, good response from the lutetium PRRT. So this patient was enrolled to this clinical trial in 2020, April, and underwent the therapy. And this is uh, just a scheme of the Lutathera. So we actually, in Korea, we do this clinical trial, and also we have a chance to give a patient a Lutathera when the, the patient actually buys. We can provide them the Lutathera. And this is um, how we do the lutathera therapy right now in Korea. And this is the treatment scheme of this clinical trial drug, which we are doing lutetium dotatate. And we use actually, uh, right now we are using a uh, syringe pump to uh, give the patient and actually this, using the syringe pump, uh, we think there is some advantage uh, to provide uh, without, so residual activity after the injection is quite low when using this uh, syringe pump. And we also give the amino acid in the same, uh, before 30 minutes before the injection of this lutetium dotate drug. And one hour uh, before we, give them the on this uh, anti-emetic drugs. So this is, uh, it seems quite a lot of lines, but we 
give them uh, two liters of amino acid right now. So, and uh, so right now in Korea, we have patients have two options for the treatment of neuroendocrine tumor. One is Utocera, which is not act, which is uh, currently approved. Uh, recently, it has been approved by the Korean FDA. And also one another drug which is in clinical trial. So this is two drug, two options. And uh, I would like to show some pictures. So, uh, so these are the amino acids that are actually uh, connected to the patient. Uh, so we give them uh, two, uh, two liters of amino acid. But because there is no bag that contains two liters, we had to put uh, four bottles of 500 milliliter. And this is uh, Luta Thera actually comes into this kind of buyer and we uh, prepare by pulling out to this kind of syringe. And we use a syringe pump for the infusion of this uh, lutetium dotate drug uh, like this. And after the infusion, we actually wash the syringe uh, like two or three more times to uh, minimize the residual activity and to give the patient the most of the uh, PRRT. Uh, so we do, after the injection, we wash out the syringe and also we push the line with the normal cell line. And then we uh, collect these uh, residuals of line, the uh, line where the drug was uh, delivered and the syringe to check the residual activity. And when we put, like we are now, we have done a 150 microcurie uh, millicury for the treatment and 200 millicury and after the injection, the residual was uh, near uh, 0.0 millicurie uh, as an average. Yes, yeah, so, and we are also doing a uh, spec CT and scan, lutetium scan image for the dosimetry study. And we have uh, selected four time points at four hour, 24 hour, 84 and 120 hours for the dosimetry study. And two more patients, uh, actually three more patients have underwent uh, uh, this uh, clinical trial right now. So we are expecting a, uh, we now have uh, seen, so we now have done a, for the first patient, we got a, a Response evaluation was uh, done after two cycles of lutetium dotate. And this is the first patient what, who previous, uh, earlier shown with the liver metastasis. And as you can see, the drug was delivered very well. At, and you can see at the four hour images. And so after the therapy, so it has passed 16 weeks after the therapy, first therapy and eight weeks after the second therapy. So we have evaluated the response. And as you can see, actually the disease, uh, the liver metastasis have uh, significantly decreased. So I think it, this drug actually seems to be really promising for the uh, uh, treatment of neuroendocrine patients in Korea. And also, we are now, the uh, KFDA had approved, IN, IND approval was done for the lutetium PSMA therapy. So we will soon uh, start the therapy, uh, lutetium PSMA therapy in Korea uh, soon, I think. Okay, so that was end of my uh, presentation. If there is any comments or questions, please freely. And also for the previous uh, lecture from Yun Sang Lee, if you have any comments or questions, please. I believe this is a brilliant presentation and uh, 
brilliant findings. Uh, this is indeed very impressive uh, because neuroendocrine tumors are uh, still a mystery, even in the oncological uh, perspective or oncological genre. But uh, nuclear medicine, really, this is amazing. Uh, this could this could be a new milestone. Uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I think. Uh, uh, have you just focused on uh, rectal carcinoids or uh, and pancreatic carcinoids? Uh, have, have you done uh, this uh, on the basis of carcinoids? Uh, we not. Uh, for the, we actually uh, enrolled uh, one patient who has a lung carcinoid, uh, but he, not yet we have delivered the uh, therapy, but we will soon deliver a therapy to the lung carcinoid patient. And actually these patients, yeah, are, so what kind of meaning for the Rectal carcinoid? Yeah, carcinoids and neuroendocrine tumors generally fall under the uh, similar criteria, you see. So yeah. basically, we were, I was wondering if, uh, you know, uh, the common carcinoid, uh, which is actually the most common carcinoid, the lung carcinoid, as you specified previously, um, it's um, usually an angiotensin releasing uh, tumor. Uh, it releases the angiotensin uh, hormone. So basically, um, the, I was actually wondering because my specialty, subspecialty actually, to be specific, is lung cancers. Um, so yeah, I, I believe, and pancreatic cancers, as we know, has very poor prognosis. Uh, this similar story with uh, colon cancer and rectal cancers. But uh, this, this is really indeed exemplary. And if nuclear medicine can really take this step, then I believe that uh, we could really broaden our spectrums in the days to come. Yeah, I really agree with your comment. And actually, there is also some uh, interesting, I think, some points of this uh, therapy. Uh, so we are actually, oh, actually, uh, uh, the inclusion criteria from the Lutacera therapy was actually uh, limited to the uh, neuro pancreatic gap neuroendocrine tumor patients. But uh, our attempt, because uh, we are just a fast follower, our, our attempt is actually to broaden the indication. So our inclusion criteria is not only limited to the GAP NEP, but we are actually, uh, we are providing this therapy to every neuroendocrine tumor patient with who has a positive uh, uptake in the gallium dotatop or somatostatin receptor imaging. But also what we recently have seen is that these somatostatin receptors are actually quite positive in the breast cancer patients and other tumors uh, frequently have a high expression of somatostatin receptors and so I think this, uh, if we can broaden the indication, these patients also can be a candidate of PRRT therapy. Uh, you specified them. another drug aside from the uh, Lutathera. Um, so actually, this is a, uh, uh, our Korean uh, pharmacy made, made one, but the chemical composition is actually the same, which is the lutetium dotatate. So, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank this, you. Is, this, is, this is great. So if there is any other comments, I think we can now end our workshop uh, today. And um, before uh, that, please, uh, Again, sorry to announce so much, but if you have time, please participate in the survey, uh, which is in the chat link. And thank you very much for participating in this workshop. We really thank everyone.
who have uh, joined this uh, workshop. And if Professor Shamin, do you have any <laughs> comments for us for the? Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, it was a very um, uh, informative uh, workshop. I think uh, all of our participants from Bangladesh uh, have learned a lot of things. And um, and thank you for arranging um, this type of workshop for us. Uh, we um, we would like to thank Professor Dong Suli also from um, from our Nimmas on behalf of our Nimmas. Um, okay, please go ahead. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Professor Lee, for arranging a nice uh, workshop for us. And uh, I think our participants uh, have learned a lot of things from this uh, workshop. And um, it will be helpful for us, for, for us, for our future planning to develop our therapeutic nuclear medicine in our country. And um, hope uh, you will arrange a more um, workshop um, in future through this project and um, and that's all from my side thank you very much okay uh, thank you uh, so i was just uh, watching from my office using my smartphone so that uh, the, i could just uh, find the quality of audio the audio is uh, yes. the most important and uh, i hope i wish uh, the audio quality would have been helpful for the all the participants in bangladesh <coughs> Yes. And yes. Uh, why just to kind of, uh, uh, this is my second time to listen to their presentation because uh, I listened carefully uh, last week uh, in Indonesian meeting. So uh, while I'm uh, listening uh, to the second presentation and uh, I called up uh, the Professor Jae Sung Lee just before and mm -hmm. uh, I uh, just uh, discussed and finalized that uh, we are going to have a uh, winter workshop again. Similarly, yes. but uh, uh, what about the uh, twice? Two hours first and then two hours, uh, the three, uh, two or three weeks uh, later. So that uh, the after the first, uh, the introduction uh, one uh, regarding the physics about the dosimetry and theranostics. Theranostics and dosimetry. So uh, the, uh, again, the core organizer might be uh, would be, uh, should be, the uh, Dr. So. Dr. So, mm -hmm. uh, at that moment, and, and what I'm saying is just uh, since uh, the October, uh, he's going to be entitled uh, as an uh, assistant professor in this department. And so, uh, Dr. So, okay. co organizer, and Professor Chai Sung Lee is uh, another co organizer. So, I just uh, almost persuaded uh, Professor Chai Sung Lee to let uh, his lecture to be a, uh, very easy to understand for clinicians, clinicians, and 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 uh, they uh, make his uh, the uh, contents uh, the uh, palatable. Uh, the, so uh, the for that uh, to achieve that kind of objective. Uh, Dr. So and uh, Professor Yun Sang Lee's collaboration at this moment uh, was would be a kind of a benchmark, and uh, the everything would be in YouTube and and you can replay, and you can mm -hmm. have the uh, material, and this uh, because of the COVID pandemic, COVID nineteen pandemic, uh, the this was in mind as I just to uh, uh, introduce to. Uh, and and, uh, uh, and but uh, it facilitated our uh, virtual collaboration. And thank you, Dr. Park and Professor Insamia. And uh, thank you, uh, Professor Shamin. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Hello. Thank you, thank you. from Bangladesh. Thank you, thank you to all participants.